Hello and welcome to another Foundry tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to uh, discuss um, the combat tracker, uh, combat and extended tests. Um, I'm using Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay uh, as a system and most of the things I've talked about up to now are uh, Foundry uh, general so they will be valid for any uh, system. But the uh, combat, of course, is specific for uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Um, you might have noticed that uh, if you watched my previous video, uh, that the Schaffenfest map, which I'm using now, uh, had a grid, and this one does not. Um, usually, when you are uh, using battle mats for encounters, especially combat encounters, you want to keep track of the player's movement. And of course, a grid is a very logical and handy way to do that. But uh, the downside is that a grid is square, and I think the diagonal movement on the grid is uh, well weird. Um, and if you disable the grid, you can uh, still use the movement. You just have to use a ruler, and there's a ruler right here. And one cool feature is that if you click on a, a token and drag the ruler. You can then hit the spacebar and it will move along its path. You can also use angles if you drag and then hold control, click, and then hit spacebar and it will move along a route. So hold control, click, and you can click multiple times. And then hit spacebar and it will move. Very fun. Um, oop, just disable it. For this uh, map, I've used uh, walls. If you want to see how you can place walls, check out the uh, previous video. I've used terrain walls because if I use normal walls, the line of sight would be blocked from the front of these tents and you would not be able to see the tents. They would be blacked out, like uh, behind here. And because I use terrain walls, uh, the tent is still visible. Now you might think, well, if you use walls, can't players just drag their token like this behind it? Not the GM can, but a player, I will show you very quick, the player cannot, he cannot drag his token. So, um, that's that. Let's go find a combat encounter because there's probably some baddies here uh, it's a combat to tutorial uh, after all don't forget you can uh, drag journal notes onto the map um, this nice image um, if you want players to be able to access it access it themselves you have to give them permission for the journal otherwise you'll have to click the show image button there we go um, move down. Hey, there's something there. Like, subscribe, share, and hit that bell. Well, of course. Um, there we go. There's a escaped beastman or something. Uh, you'll notice that there's also a wolf here, and it is invisible. I've done that for a reason. If you want to make a token invisible, right click. And you can toggle it with this, so it's invisible. I select all the people that are going to be engaged in combat. Right click one of them and click the combat, combat tab. And that will make them show up in the uh, combat tracker. You'll notice that there's an icon here. <coughs> the, com the wolf is automatically made invisible. But the visibility toggled is different um, from the combat tracker, separate from the combat tracker and on the map. If I toggle this here, it will make the wolf visible only in the combat tracker for the players and not on the map. And if I toggle it here, it will make the wolf visible on the map but not in the combat tracker. Um, so again, if you have this toggled, the 
entry, the, the token will not be visible in the combat tracker. So players, if they check their own combat tracker, they will only see the gore and themselves. You will also, also notice that I have uh, some numbers here. These are wound values. And you might think, well, I don't want my players to see uh, how many wounds the enemy has. Don't worry, they will only see their own wounds. Uh, we can check that real quickly. Oh, and we see, I show them the visual. And here it is, the gore, they don't see anything. Um, the next thing to do is roll initiative. The, you can always let the players uh, roll themselves through the uh, combat tracker. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, you want to speed things up for some reason, you can always roll all the NPCs or just roll. And you'll notice there's also dialogue here in the dialogue box. And I want to see the dialogue, but I also want to see the combat tracker. Just right-click on the combat tracker and it will show a pop-up window. Right. Begin combat. Kindred is first. He is very rash. And he charges this gore for whatever reason. Who knows why? Of course, he doesn't see the wolf. It's hidden between boxes and stuff. Um, he targets. Players can just double click, but the GM, uh, as a GM, I like to do it like this. He targets the token and he initiates in combat. Go to combat tab. He has a quarter staff equipped. Just hit the quarter staff. We can put in all kinds of modifiers here for charging, for advantage, for anything. Mm -hmm. I will not bother with it now because it's not about the combat rules, it's just about using foundry. So we roll. Uh, you'll see dice. That's because I've got a module installed. It's called Dice So Nice. Uh, it uh, makes uh, a dice roll visible, which I find uh, is really. Um, helpful in engaging players with the game because they're used to rolling dice on the tabletop and uh, pushing a button or writing something in a dialogue like a slash roll takes a bit away from the immersion and uh, with this uh, dice and dice well it, add, it adds to the immersion um, he is targeting the gore he did actually pretty good with two uh, success levels now let's see how the gore uh, defense, he can dodge with this button, or he can use an improvised weapon, or he can stomp, but he's a, uh, um, he doesn't have stomp. Uh, he can use his, uh, his horns or his weapon, and we'll just use his weapon for now. He does poorly, and he has a fumble. How great! Um, Right click, apply damage, damage applied, four, and you will see that he only has one wound left. And now we can also click the fumble. Oops, you mishandle your weapon, drop, you miss your next action. Oh no! Right, the next one. I think our pirate is going to make minced meat of um, this gore, but maybe he moves into position and by a stroke of luck he sees, he spotted, spots the, uh, the wolf and decides to target the wolf because he has a crossbow. Um, the crossbow is not his only weapon, but you see it's equipped and he cannot equip other weapons. And he's got some bolts. Make sure that the bolts are equipped and that the crossbow is loaded. Of course, it's beginning of combat and the crossbow is loaded. And he will now, he has targeted it and he will shoot. I'm not bothering uh, with any modifiers, like I said before, I'm just rolling. And of course, it's a fumble. But I don't want a fumble. I click this box. Uh, 33, let's make it a 30. Up. And it's now uh, a success. And 
for some reason it says opposed, but we don't want opposed, probably because he's too close. So we just click this to make it unopposed, and he won by zero success levels, and nine damage, apply damage. There we go. And we now see that the wolf has some damage. It's the gore. It's on target. On target. The gore targets this guy. And he's going to use his horns. Sure, why not? A 32. There we go. And he defends. And he does a dodge because he sucks at fighting. Dodge. No. I don't know what I did wrong here. Well, let's just delete everything. Even experienced people make mistakes. It is the Gore's turn. He targets him, rolls his horns, and roll. It's 27, and now he is going to dodge. Roll, that's better. He does terribly, of course, as things go. Apply damage. And he has a critical. Not because he rolled uh, a double or something, but because well, he did a lot of wounds and he only has 11. And just click the critical, it will give a result. Bruce ribs, click the Bruce ribs, open his sheet, drag and drop. And go to effects, I will now see Bruce ribs and also two wounds applied to two critical wounds. He has received one instance of critical wounds. Um, there we go. Let's say for some reason, some miraculous way, uh, Chorus defeats the wolf and he defeats the gore, and we end combat. Yep. It will immediately give an end of combat reminder. One thing is a minor infection because this guy received a critical wound and I can click here and get a minor infection and what it is and, and also a reminder is because the gore has corruption I can decide well it is minor corruption it will pop up this dialogue window and then everybody uh, that was in contact with him if I just untarget him, this guy can resist. How does Gundred resist the corruption? Uh, cool for mental, physical means endurance. He rolls, and I immediately get. A f well, he's lucky, he's badly wounded, but he resists uh, corruption. Right, and let's remove these guys. Now, the pirate shot his crossbow, and it is unloaded. It's not loaded anymore. You can always just click load it. But normally, to load is a test. And you can already see I had some instances here. Um, it will show up in the tab here. Normally, these are your skills. Below is extended tests. And there you go. Reloading crossbow. You only need one success level. You roll. And he rolls a 9. And immediately the test is removed because it is successful. And if you go to combat, you'll see that it is loaded. If I shoot again, roll, it will automatically be unloaded again. There we go. Unloaded. And again, there will be a Reload extended test. And if I change this to one, oop, 
Um, there are, uh, of course, maybe other extended tests that you want to do. For instance, um, this guy's badly hurt and he wants to heal him, but he doesn't have any heal skills, so he argues with the GM that, well, he has animal care and uh, he knows how to treat wounds with animals, so he's going to treat uh, this guy's wound. And the GM decides, well, okay, uh, I will need an extended uh, test. You need uh, five successes. So we go to the extended tests, hit the plus button, and go to the details. And here we do animal care. Make sure you write this exactly the same as it is in the skills tab. We need five successes and on completion. And we remove the test. We can also just reset it. If you want to keep it, you can also rename it. But it's just for once now, so we do remove. Okay, you know. And we roll. There we go. You roll 11, two successes, and the bar fills two out of five successes. And we keep, can keep doing this. Wow, really good. And then he has healed his little buddy. So that's extended tests. Of course, there are some more extended tests that are common uh, in the rules, namely with uh, casting, but they work differently. And I will show you that in a next video. For now, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and hit that bell, and I will catch you in another video. Bye-bye.